413 WMAZ Morning starts now. Gearing up for another summer-like day today, but tomorrow, all eyes on the potential for severe weather. I'll take you through it, give you all the details coming up. Plus, a shooting on Fort Valley State's campus leaves investigators wondering who's responsible. The latest on the case and the lockdown it caused. Plus, pen to paper, a bill affecting dispatchers is now law. What it requires and how it could mean the difference between life or death. And a lot of food, drinks, and even long lines are expected today for Cinco de Mayo. But we talked to one making business about just how important it is for today and their bottom line. Oh, good morning. You're looking live over a very festive and bright start to the day in downtown Macon. It's 631 on this Thursday, May the 5th. I'm Caitlin Heck. And I'm Wanye Reese. Baby Friday. We've made oh, it. We have made it. We are inching closer to the weekend. Of course, we're also inching closer to that severe weather threat for tomorrow, Courtney. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, just got to get through one day and then we can look ahead to also we're getting closer to Mother's Day and the weekend does look wonderful. A wonderful looking start to the day as well. Glowing sky out there as the sun starts to rise on this Thursday, 65 in the city of Macon. Dew point in the low 60s, so it's pretty muggy out there. You're definitely going to notice that humidity as you step out the door. 67 up in Milledge. 66 in Warner Robins and in Montezuma, 65 in Roberta, 61 in Eastman, and 66 in Rochelle. You factor in that humidity, temperatures are, or excuse me, dew point temperatures are in the mid 60s. So, yes, it feels very muggy out there, and that will lead to quite the hot and humid afternoon. By lunchtime, temperatures in the mid 80s, and then we're topping out in the low 90s early this afternoon. That chance for isolated storms could maybe have a strong storm again today, but tomorrow, all eyes on that potential for severe weather. I'm going to time everything out. I'll give you all the details and of course have the latest on your Mother's Day weekend forecast. That's all in just a few minutes. Thank you, Courtney. A shooting at a college in central Georgia. A deadly accident on Lake Sinclair. An attempted robbery at a Macon family dollar. Let's go ahead and catch you up on the three things that you need to know right now. This morning, Fort Valley State University is no longer under a lockdown. The campus issued one after a shooting that left one student hurt. The school says university police responded to reports of gunfire at a residential building just before seven last night. The victim went to a hospital. Now the GBI and Peach County deputies are investigating. Sheriff Terry D says it's unclear if the shooting was self-inflicted or someone shot the student. And investigators continue to look into a crash on Lake Sinclair that left a 55 year old man dead. Sergeant Bubba Stanford with the Georgia Department of Natural Resources says the call came in just after 530 yesterday evening. It was about an accident near Twin Bridges Marina on the Putnam County side of the lake. Witnesses say 55 year old Christopher Lovin hit a wave at a high speed and got thrown off of his jet ski. He was unconscious and not breathing when bystanders pulled him out. Attempts to revive him were not successful. Stanford says this marks the fifth death on the lake this year and the third in the Twin Bridges area. Right now, Bibb County deputies are looking for the man who tried to rob a Macon family dollar. The sheriff's office says it happened at the one on Emory Highway just after eight last night. They say a man with a gun went into the store and demanded money from the clerk. He ran away after not getting any cash. No one was hurt. If you have any information, you can call the Macon Regional Crime Stoppers at 1-877-68-CRIME. That number again for you, it's 1-877-68-CRIME. The time is now 634. Let's get you to your state headlines. The GBI is now investigating a baby's death after the child was left in a hot car for several hours. Police are now charging the father with second degree murder in the case. Our station in Atlanta reports that David Watley showed up at the Snellville Police Department Tuesday afternoon to pick up guns confiscated in a previous case. That's when police arrested him for a probation violation stemming from a hit and run crash. Police say Watley never mentioned he'd left his child in the car. Around 9 Tuesday night, the grandmother brought the baby to a hospital. Staff there determined the eight month year old was dead. The eight month old rather was dead and had been in the car for seven hours at the police station. Well, the Maine Athletic Association for State High Schools is now restricting transgender athletes. The Georgia High School Association voted yesterday to prohibit transgender boys and girls from playing on the school sports teams matching their gender identity. The GHSA now says students must play on teams that match the sex listed at birth. The change takes effect for the next school year. A new bill could prove life saving is now in law. Senate Bill 505 requires every emergency dispatcher to go through annual CPR instruction training. Governor Brian Kemp signed it yesterday. The law comes after a series of investigations done by our sister station in Atlanta. They revealed that 80 Georgia 911 centers were not able to give CPR instructions, including at Atlanta's airport. 
The airport now employs emergency medical dispatchers. Also, the American Heart Association of Georgia has brought attention to the problem for several legislative sessions. In election news this morning, if you are a Bibb County voter heading to the polls this month, you'll see two races for Macon Water Authority seats. But what exactly is the Water Authority and why does it matter? Well, water is something you really don't think about right until you don't have it. The Macon Water Authority is the agency in Bibb County that makes sure that that's never the case. The authority's website says that they oversee over 1,400 miles of water mains and service lines and serve about 155,000 customers. Now, the authority manages drinking water, sewer, and most recently storm water. Chairman Sam Hart says some of the Water Authority's main tasks are replacing old pipes. That's a tremendous task uh, in, ahead of us, but it's a tremendous opportunity too to start trying to replace pipes that have been here for over 100 years. Hart, who is retiring, says the Water Authority also provides support to the Industrial Authority for Economic Development. He says the next authority chair should have a vision for the Bibb County community. You can check out profiles on chairman candidates and those running for the District 1 board seat right now on our website. And you can also find them in our May 2022 election guide. You'll also learn about other key races and dates that you need to know. The guide is on our homepage, 13WMAZ.com. You can also text the word VOTE to 478-752-1309. And we'll send that guide directly to your phone. Turning to education headlines, students at one Bibb County school will now get the chance to show off their food skills on wheels. Hutchins College and Career Academy already has a culinary program, but now it's expanding to include a mobile food truck learning lab. The Bibb County Board of Education recently approved the purchase for the food truck, so Hutchings will add it soon. The executive chef instructor for the Career Academy hopes they will get the truck rolling by January of next year. I'll check this out. Financial relief is coming for two Mercer Engineering students. U.S. Department of Defense awarded the SMART scholarship to Michaela Aves and Alyssa Bonifacio. The highly competitive scholarship is given to students who study science, math, and research. Winners get a full ride for the rest of their college career and an annual stipend. Aves graduates this semester, so her scholarship will go towards grad school. And still ahead on 13th Easy Morning. Really and truly, we don't consider them customers. We consider them part of our family. Bo and Mandy Stabilski run a sandwich shop right in the heart of downtown Milledgeville. Stacked is a place where you aren't just going to get sandwiches. Everything comes with a side of laughter. Coming up at 648, we continue our service with a smile series. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. The time is now 6.38. The forecast today putting a smile on my face so yes. far. Definitely, and it'll definitely put a smile on my face while I'm enjoying my ice cold margarita. Yes. This, yes. this afternoon because it seems like it's going to be a little humid today, Court. Hot and humid, yes. So you'll need something to cool you down. And yeah, a margarita fitting for Cinco de Mayo, if you ask me. I know that uh, we'll also have a story on a local restaurant coming up a little bit later in the show from our TJ Anthony. So you'll want to stick around. we got lots of great stories as we round out this half hour. And now here I am to tell you about the weather today. Great. Tomorrow we're going to watch for severe weather, so maybe not so great. But what was wonderful is we did pick up some very beneficial rainfall in some of those isolated thunderstorms yesterday afternoon. One of them came right over my house, but boy, did my grass and the flowers that I planted that I am happy to say are still alive. Y'all, it's been about three weeks. That's probably a record for me for keeping a plant alive, but the rain has been helpful for that and yesterday's rainfall really was as well. So in Houston County, parts of Peach County, some of those isolated heavier downpours and those thunderstorms, one of which became severe yesterday, the one in Houston County, dropped about two inches of rain and then some spots picked up over a half an inch of rain, others just about a trace amount of rainfall and some of those lighter isolated showers for the afternoon. And today we'll do that all over again, just an isolated chance for showers and thunderstorms maybe could manage to have a strong too severe storm. We don't have an organ threat for severe weather, but we'll have so much heat and instability that fuel for storms that you can't rule out a strong storm or two. Now out to our west, we do have a severe weather threat in parts of Arkansas today. You can see a Boeing line of showers and thunderstorms moving through the Little Rock area right now. Nothing severe, but some flash flood warnings in effect in parts of Oklahoma, also parts of Arkansas from all of the heavy rain. We are not going to get that kind of rainfall, but we will get at least some sort of measurable rainfall as this cold front moves through the area, but it will also bring with it the threat for 
for severe weather. All of the area under that level two out of five threat for the day tomorrow. The timing between noon and five. So I do think because of the timing of this, that is going to allow for a greater threat for severe storms rather than just that isolated threat for severe weather as we'll have a lot of fuel to work with and amongst other ingredients that will bring us this organized threat for severe weather. What we're going to be looking for gusty wind upwards of 60 miles per hour in any severe storms 40 to 50 and stronger storms. One inch diameter hail, maybe a brief tornado or two. I think the tornado threat is going to be on the lower end. So come tomorrow morning as you're heading out the door for Friday. We could have maybe a few light showers in the meantime storms ongoing out back in Alabama. Now as we head towards lunch hour, that's when the front will start to knock on our door. You can see some heavier rain really starting to take advantage of that heat of the day. Also all that moisture that will be pumping into our forecast that you will notice as you head out the door this morning. It's very muggy out there as we head towards one. That's when we'll start to open up that window of opportunity. We'll say noon to five, but by one o'clock is when that front will really start to push into our area along this gusty wind, small hail, also the potential for a brief isolated tornado come three o'clock time. A lot of students will be heading home from school. Just wait for this front to pass. It's going to be a quick mover. You don't want to be heading out when severe weather's ongoing and by five. We're said and done with our severe threat. Maybe a few lingering showers through the evening Friday, but through Mother's Day weekend, we're cooler. Cool, of course, a relative term will be in the low 80s, but that humidity will also drop. It'll be a beautiful weekend and we'll stay dry all the way through Wednesday of next week.